The following episode of the Carnival of Randomness is sponsored by an important message to you, the people from Upsetnik and Associates. Every day there are forces that are taking from you, stealing from you. Your money, your time, your freedom. Immense faceless corporations, banks, credit card companies, insurance providers, government agencies, this list goes on and on. When you are under attack and facing crisis, turn to us, Opsitnik and Associates, attorneys for you, the people. When every day becomes a battle, we can advise and assist. We have been advocates for 40 years. Email us through OpsitniksLaw.com or call us at 1-866-391-3299 or reach out to us through Opsitnik and Associates on Facebook for a prompt, no obligation, communication and consultation. Don't be pushed around. Hi, everybody. Welcome to an episode of Carnival of Randomness. It'll be a bit of a chimera. That's a mythical beast that's part something, part something else, part something else. Oh, yes, yeah, see you there. <laughs> and I'm using that because I was out in Albany and I was all over through all the highways and byways in New York. So I saw different things. And hi, Zach. How Hello. Are you? I'm Rob. How are and you? and because we're also joined by some of our very special guests, uh, as always, the ever present Greg. Hi. And how can you miss her, Susie? With the funky, uh... So, so I have a question since you were on the byways of New York. Yeah. What is this don't stay, don't drive drowsy? I mean, is now that's a new law, a new crime? I've been seeing, oh my goodness, all the way <laughs> home. That? All the way home, there are signs. If you go down Just through it, that. I was in Albany. <laughs> So all the way down, there are signs, you snooze, you, you lose. lose. Yeah. It's like, a, what, is there a sale or something? Cause that's always the, <laughs> you know, because that's always the thing where you see, ah, act now, buy this Vegematic slicer. You snooze, you lose, only $9. <laughs> but they're everywhere. And I'm thinking, okay, if I fell asleep, I won't be able to read them. But what is the what is their intention? I mean, what, is uh, there like an epidemic of I'll narcolepsy and driving or something? And I heard this on the news. This is random, 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 random of carn- Carnival of Randomness. <laughs> No sleep, guys. No Me sleep. neither. There's two people on here who didn't sleep last night. Uh, so. so, yeah. Well, we're glad you made it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyway, some, like, mother against drunk driver was really upset. You uh, know, something like along those lines. I'm not, I'm not blaming mothers against drunk drivers. I'm not blaming them. <clears throat> but I am saying someone made a big giant stink about people who are drowsy behind the wheel and probably somebody fell asleep and killed someone else and therefore you snooze you lose yeah. well you not lose, a good thing you but lose I think your so. life you lose someone else's life and i get it i get it i i do i understand that but the slogans are ridiculously stupid and not only that what are they gonna do and the lawyers thing, buy, buy a boat <laughs> i've always i admit i always admit i've always wondered about PSAs that people are going to look at them and go, I see the light. You know, unfortunately, <laughs> it's like, why, you know, either you do it or you don't. I don't think it's going to change anybody's mind, unfortunately. Well, I'll tell you, I had a near-death experience, and you do. You see these pretty colors and this this tunnel, and the tunnel talks to you, and it's like a whole, it's a vibration. It's not even a, a, a feeling. It's a vibration. So when you die, you see the light, just saying. I'm waiting for some of the day when somebody looks at the sign and gets distracted and has an accident. Have, right. How about all these damn moving signs? They're the ones no, I've almost No, people. I almost had... That almost happened to me seriously once when there was a sign, don't check your cell phone. I was looking at the sign. I almost hit a car and well, right. myself. <laughs> Maybe they should think about the fact that these signs are like paragraphs. And they're off to yeah. the side. Yeah, and they're not in front of the road. Like, right. if you want to have an effective sign, have it be one word. Caution. Yeah. Okay, right. we know what caution means. <laughs> and what they should do for the don't snooze you lose thing is they should have, like, one of those air horns. <laughs> every, time, every time it goes off, no, so it keeps you, know you away. You get, rid of, you get rid of the rumble strips and replace it with an air horn. Yeah. So what, you cross over. One thing I was going to talk about, well, you have some new music coming out. We're going to talk about that. But one of the things we've been sort of, I've never seen it. We talked about it. Greg's got people who've seen it. Birds of Prey. Haven't seen it. Want to see it. Got to go Greg, see it. Greg, let Greg talk Oh my gosh. To you. I didn't see it. But Debbie, my girlfriend, and her son went, and it didn't get very good reviews. There, and now you're, her son's been, he can come on here because he's been mentioned. Right. Well, Yay, he wants Cody. to. Yay, he, Cody. He has to work on Sundays a lot. So I told him, I said, That's one no of these excuse. days we'll get, we'll get you on here. But he was very, yeah, he was we pretty passionate about it. We want Cody. <laughs> we want Cody. I want Cody in today. We Cody want here. Cody. <laughs> so he just said it was not, it was kind of jumbled, and they, they, it strained to be humorous, and I don't know, it just didn't. 
seem to work. And you made a good point. You were saying why why is why was Harley? Well, Quinn that's what I, I said you know? and when I first saw it. I was like, Harley Quinn's not in the Birds of Prey movie. Then no. I found out that Margot Robbie, God love her, because she did a great job as Harley Quinn, isn't was an executive producer. Yeah. Put up tons of money and apparently lost a good portion of it yeah. because that movie tanked. Well, I think the original birds are quite, is Huntress, Oracle, and Black Canary. I'm right. Yeah. Sure. And the, the TV series was really quite good. I liked it. And actually, remember, I, Mia Sarah played Harley Quinn. Yeah. Harley Quinn's own. The thing I don't like it is one of those series, I watched it and followed it. And of course, when they took it off, they almost left it with a cliffhanger right. at the end because they didn't. It's like the first series of The Flash. Remember John Wesley Slash? Right. The Flash? <laughs> I like that show. Did you watch that? I've got the, of course I've got the box set. Yes. That's why they're called cliffhangers. <laughs> <laughs> but what is the last superhero movie you've seen? Me? Yeah. Oh. That one? <laughs> no, I haven't even seen Richard that Donner's one. Richard Donner's Superman? No. Yeah. <laughs> What do you think of the, uh, the actually the, the, ex- the extended cut of Richard Donner's Superman? Think about it while he's talking. What the second one? Yeah. Oh, I bought. That. I, I love it. I love the yeah, extended the cut. It's great. incredible. It was really good. I've seen the Blitzen cut too. I didn't know Reindeer could make movies. <laughs> Which movie did I say I saw? Do you remember? I don't remember Reindeer. About... Oh, you know what? It was Suicide. Suicide Squad. Suicide Squad. That's Which cool. I still thought was okay. I, thought I it don't was know all right, why, but I'm. I'm more of a dark person. I like yeah. dark people. I like scary things. Didn't you like Captain Boomerang and his little teddy bear or whatever? Yeah. Though? <laughs> Why would they keep him of all the characters? Digger? Oh, Guardians of the Galaxy I've also seen about eight times. And I like yeah, that, that was one. great. And remember that, too. That's not the original Guardians. No. Not oh, at all. That, rac- that raccoon damn near got written out of the comic because he was <laughs> the most unpopular character. Really? Everybody wow. that read that comic hated that raccoon. But in huh. the movie, he was great. Yeah, because movies, you can get away with doing stuff like that for merch. <clears throat> right. Yeah, true. I mean, that's the thing. And have you been keeping up with the CW shows? Yeah. yeah. No. We were just nope. watching Flash this morning. Nope, nope, nope. I haven't. I watched some of Crisis, time. actually. I don't. I never have time. Really. I haven't even had time to see Doctor Who, damn it! That I did watch. That, like, remember a daily <laughs> refresher, mm-hmm. the whole thing when you were playing? Mm-hmm. Remember that? It's like, yeah. I love you, I love everybody. I saw Hannah. Gotta go. saw all you. I gotta get out of here. <laughs> Can I run home? I'm pissed about that. And I'm not gonna say a word about it, though, because you, you haven't dare. seen it, but not I think Jody. I've seen one episode. I think Jody really hit her stride. You had some views about this, didn't you? About What's that? Doctor Who? Oh well, I mean, I, I haven't seen the new one. I, I'm I like the old seventies ones, but me too. Tom Baker, but I, I mean, you know, I haven't given this Thank new you. one a, a shot yet. So, <laughs> I mean, it was kind of inevitable that they just that they switched it over to a woman, and why not? Well, you it's know, a, it's about I will say it's that, about time. It's about goddamn time. I still, my theory still is, I want a bovine. I, have, I want I a Doctor Moo. <laughs> no, so I think that would be cool. Uh, Two, I think it was two years ago, Rob got me a signed, <laughs> Rob, listen to this, Rob got me a signed Christmas card from Tom Baker. Ah, uh, nice. yes. Yeah, I did. I went down the street, there's my so neighbor true. Tom Baker. And... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, one of the things Tom I still had, did you ever go to the conventions XSI had down by State Street? Yes. I still have yeah. the Jelly Babies in a TARDIS box. Could you imagine the, it would Ooh. be like opening a sarcophagus oh. and finding something oh. left in there. Did you ever now. see what happens to those things in time? There's a YouTube, uh, one of the YouTubers I follow, he, he'll do that, he'll eat like really ancient food and he had like 30 year old jelly babies Woo! Well, i've seen people do that with cereal I mean, be, well they don't become inedible but or they don't become like toxic but yeah. they become rocks and they're all the same color they're like jet black <laughs> and they're hard as rocks because wow. oh, it's all all it is is sugar right so it's not going to spoil now, jumping around a little, as I said we were going to you have some new music coming out don't you yay yep and how's that been going? I know that's what, this is going to be out so everybody can hear it and yep. get ready for all the new upcoming shows. And it's every crunch time. <laughs> well, we're recording now. We did some vocals yesterday and guitar player did some stuff crunch. on his song. And we're just uh, putting it together. And do you have a, sort of a theme over, overlapping again for this? terms of songs um, sometimes it seems like your music like still like your great old trailer romance it's, it's stuck in my head for two weeks last time awesome. Yay. <laughs> Yay. I, I, I wrote that song 
I actually had pumpkin love stuck in I'm my head big, for some time. I'm a big hook to you drop kind of guy. When I well, I always songs. think of, I take my dogs for long walks, and I start at Fairport, and you end up going, it's like you go back in time if you head toward Menden. It gets all the old past. You end up going through a trailer park. Right. And it's just really kind of neat. You just go through it, and it's like, wait a second, now trailer park what's next is these old woods and every time i hear that i think of that <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah yeah that's kind of the whole idea is you know we were driving down 104 and there's this one little trailer park right on 104 and you were talking about the trailer that was in the tree right <laughs> and this is in 2006 i think we were talking about this and i was i wrote a my my old roommate john franchot and i <laughs> I want to get a picture. We were, I think we I were driving by, and all of a sudden, if we're, I'm like, doom, 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 doom. I'm living in a trailer park. Doom, doom. I'm living in a trailer park. Yes, I'm living in a trailer park. Hey, Jimmy, give us some Jim Beam. Woo! Right. <laughs> and then he came up with Trailer Romance. And At a Christmas party. Over. Yeah. Because we were drinking heavily. And we were drinking Jim Beam heavily. <laughs> Actually, I think of a double wide by Southern Culture on the Skids, too. Oh, yeah. I love, I love, uh, one of the, I love Southern one Culture on the Skids. One of the funniest ones. I saw one gig. Mary had to run off stage to go to the bathroom in the middle of the well, It was so funny. Well, that, the whole idea but... of that song was kind of based on that kind of a band. Well, you get into it, too. You um, sort of like, Jay. Well, I lived in a trailer park for a while, so, you know. I've always heard. Experiences I've always, but I've always heard. I've had many friends who have, and they all liked it. Yeah, it yeah. was. They fun. all really did. They fun. really did. Fun. One of my friends no talked to me and said, "People at all." Like when I moved back here, one of my friends told me, "You know, you should look into." I was looking what I was going to do, and they said you should look into it because he really liked it. it yeah. was like, who who it, did that song, Queen of My Double Wide Trailer? Was it Sammy Kershaw? It was actually well, I know actual, double no. wide. There's it was an actual country those. song. I, it was Queen of My Double Wide Trailer, and it's. There's just been we're not going to play it here because rights, but <laughs> it, it, listen to that one. It is amazing. And there's double wide, but yeah, Sammy one. Kershaw. There's, there's, there's been right. this resurgence of country of double wide trailer theme yeah. stuff, so I, that's why I thought it was a good time to, to try something like that. So, but but if you go down Fisher's Road in Wayne, Wayne County, right there's this there's this house. All you needed to say was Wayne County. Well, it's right before you get to uh, Wayne County Marion Road or whatever the. And there's this house, and they got this big tree in the front yard, and they built a tree house thing. But you could tell they built it out of the aluminum siding part of a tra- of a trailer. Nice, and it's really cool. That's why I took a picture. It of is it. really cool picture. And I, I I just thought it was pretty. Well, funny. I remember one of my, if you think of celebrities, Captain Beefheart lived in a trailer in the desert. Oh, that's cool. For years and years, that's what he did. And I can imagine how cool it would probably be, how it would look. He probably had a ton of land. Too. Well, there's always those sci-fi movies where there's the crazy tinfoil hat guy yeah. in the trailer with his yeah. little radio. Eight-legged broadcast. freaks. <laughs> I actually like eight-legged freaks. I can't yeah. help. Oh that yeah, was a yeah. Great movie. A, that was a fun See, movie. See, I did. I thought it was funny I, I, as all heck. It was great. And all I, I thought about the conspiracy it. guy, the conspiracy guy in it, the yeah. guy with the radio. And I everything. like turtles. But I was going to say, talking as we said, we're jumping all over, obviously. It is Where do you get? Randomness. You are mm-hmm. doing, Take you've done listeners. ballroom blitz and it's on the new thing here. Mm-hmm. But what do you get, like, how do you decide what you're going to cover sometime besides your originals? Is it popping your heads? I just want to do this song. We get together in rehearsal and we all come up with different songs that we want to do. And then we say, "What's what do you think is the best one for us? And then... We'll all kind of like throw our own little ideas in the hat, and then we'll try. Wasn't ballroom some sort of dare? Or hey, can you do this like that? Wasn't it there was, some sort it of a for, thing? It was for Ben Beaver's barn bash. Yeah, that's why we did that. Yeah, that was alliterative. <laughs> it was really I know, that was, that was quality. Right there. Yeah, Ben Beaver's barn bash. I mean, so I know we, it fits you though. I mean, that's the thing is you make it your own or whatever. I think it well, you comes gotta, out fun. And but when we do come up with covers, you know, we'll. <coughs> I, I send a message out to everybody. Give me some covers that you want to do. Danny, our sax player, he's like, bam, 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 bam. <laughs> yeah, he's great. And he's great. He's like, I'm going to do this, 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 this. And uh, speaking of which, his cousin, uh, Victoria Mark, is going to be singing with us, doing backup. And um, his girlfriend, Emily, 
Cole is going to be dancing with us now. I just oh, thought I'd let you know this. Uh, for you are so over the years. You're like a, a mentoring program for so many musicians. It's exactly I could count. Right. You're absolutely right. Like I remember right. there was a documentary I saw on Jethro Tull one time, mm-hmm. and they all met at a pub, mm-hmm. and he went. Ian went through. How many people he had playing with him? And I've met David Pegg, great yep, guy, yep, real yep. nice guy. And it seems like I can think of all the musicians you've had playing with you over the years. Absolutely. And we came up with an idea. Called you can't find a better drummer. It's true. <laughs> well, I, I agree. agree. Um, no, we came up with Boost Records. But the reason looking. I called it Boost Records because I wanted to get him up and get him out of Rochester. Get him up and get him out of Rochester. So I'd give him a boost. And push them on their way. So we've been recording people, and we've been helping them. We've been giving them direction on how to do things. I'm 53 years old. I'm not going on tour right away. I will be eventually with mm-hmm. Greg. It's true. Where are we going? Everywhere and anywhere we okay. can. You're like you're I'm like the, you're like the person in Buddhism who the other people are climbing over the wall, and you stay to bring the other people over. Exactly. Only I can think of that analogy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, well, you know, for me, love... it, all the people that have in, been in our band, look at Heidi, Heidi right. Alcott. She is yes. now singing with Infrared Radiation Orchestra. She started as a dancer in the band. I know. And then she started singing with us, and she latched onto it so quickly, and Kim Dreheim was like, um, I really need to ask you this. Please don't ever get mad at me, but I really want Heidi to be in my band. Because he wanted me to sing for him, and I was like, I can't do this. I and she wields band. a mean theremin. Yeah, As that's the thing. Does. I think the first time, speaking of that, my friend Stan the Man, Meryl. Yep, Stan when is he, who when they Stan were playing, introduced me to Kim. When they were playing, I remember... Stan put on the tinfoil hat yeah. and went up and played, went up and played the oh, theremin. the theremin show, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so anyway, Heidi yeah. jumped at it, and I was like, Kim. I, I don't own Heidi. Heidi is her own free agent. She can She's do whatever great. she wants. She's one of my best friends. Of course. Felt the very moonbeam, uh, of course. Well, We're not saying the no, right. No. I said it no, wrong. No, yes, you did. Uh, Falcon Fairy. Uh, tree Fairies or something? Yeah, hey, I have an idea. Falcon Fairy from the Tree Toss. That was just Falcon Fairy. Oh, oh gosh. Yeah. Heidi. How many names do you have? Isn't Kim doing yeah. something in May? I got some message from him. About I should he's too. Doing some sort of gig in May. He's been wanting to be. A bunch of us. To he's been wanting yeah. to be on here, yeah. but we always get our time. But like he had a rehearse last time. But I remember like his band Static Cling and talking about mm-hmm. covers. He told me one time he does that really good version of White Rabbit. Yeah. And he said one time, you know, I can write maybe three good songs a year, but there's all these other really good songs out there. <laughs> That's three more than most people could write. You know. <laughs> right? And I think that yeah. I mean he writes a lot more. I think infrared, if you haven't seen them, plug for them. It's oh, always something fantastic. different too. Fantastic. You gotta see but infrared radiation orchestra. They're a lot like what you do too, in a way that everything's different every time. Every it's time. always a you know, Plus, when you do the love theme from Zontar, the thing from Venus is... Didn't we... I was going to say, we played them. Come on. Yeah. A while back. We played them. We, a while back. I think we you, played that song, too. When you see a live show, do you want to see the same thing every time? I know I don't. I don't. I don't want to hear the same thing. I don't want to see the same thing. It's live music. I want to hear all the fuck-ups. I want to hear all the things that happen. I want to... Oh, sorry. I want to hear mm. all the, like, little things. Oh, no, my string broke. Watch Bob... Restring a guitar. Okay, while I got he's one playing. for you. You said it. Todd Bradley. He's uh-huh. playing. I love Todd. He freaked something on his acoustic cord went on the thing. There we plug in. Mm-hmm. So there we had the moment he had to use his other guitar. Yep. But like last night, the show I saw in Albany, it had Bell Skinner, who was like acoustic. Mm-hmm. The, the Dust Bowl Fairies, who were like sort of carnival, psychedelic, Ooh. all over the place. Then Michaela Davis and her band, who's Michaela and all of them. I don't know how you would even describe them. I describe them as kind of like uh, Bowie Dead. Yeah. Grateful Dead and Bowie kind of put wow. together. Oh, that's interesting. interesting. Yeah, yeah, that's. Bowie wow. Dead, Dead Bowie. Now I want to go Bowie back dead. in time and see them. <laughs> yeah, you're right. So you were asking about what the name of the CD is going to be. I don't know. <clears throat> Can't figure it out yet. Probably something about like crazy and in, so, in the universe or crazy in the USA or something. So after the, the sequel, <laughs> so after the show, stay tuned for a track from, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you could be like, it'll just come to you probably. That's what I figure. But, you um, know, going back to what you were saying about like making mistakes in live music, a good performer will use that. Mm-hmm. To take time 
to like, you know, bring it down, get comfy with the audience. Hey, you know, see, I'm only human, you know, or whatever. And then you can use that to your advantage. But some people freak out. Right, oh, but, my God. Oh, my God. But my how many image, of those you know? people think that they're somehow superhumans and that they can do no wrong? But so they're they would not. Just have to show down. No, they're not. They're, they're people. And it's Calm like, down, okay, guys. now I'm back. Let's go. You know, and then well, people, you don't want to be like Ryan Adams <laughs> when the show might be over if he breaks a string or something. That's I right. saw him Freaking, once. He broke uh, a string. I thought the show was over. Yeah, when you hit level of divas like that, right. mm. eesh, might be time to rethink things. Or uh, Hall, John uh, Holland Oates, the blonde guy, whatever. Daryl Hall. Daryl Hall. 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 Yeah. He had a hissy fit on stage with the sound guy and started yelling at him on stage. And I'm just like, yeah, yeah I want bad. nothing to do with you ever again. I don't like you. But Oates is mullet. <laughs> Oates is mullet. I don't care. Don't care. You don't yell at people like that on stage. You don't treat people like that. And that's, he showed his true colors. And no yeah, thanks. that's pretty bad. No thanks. Well, I've seen it many times with bands just to go, let's start again. <laughs> right. uh, um, uh, Love and Rockets did that. Daniel Ash. Oh my God, I love Daniel Ash. That band is great. So. They were fantastic, you know, because I was a huge Bauhaus fan also. Uh, when I was working at uh, Idols, Gosh, 1986. Oh my goodness, I, I remember that. And uh, Daniel Ash is there, and he and um, David J, the sound guy, everything went. All the sound went wow. while they were in the middle of a ball of confusion. And after that, he goes, Let's start this over again, shall we? You deserve a good show. You're a beautiful audience. And I was like, I love this band so much. I have some VHS of Love and Rockets. I think it's a I bunch do. of their videos or something. They're really cool stuff. Mm-hmm. I actually have, I'll, I'll let you borrow it if you want. I have Bauhaus done in Japanese. Ah! Did you loan me that one? Yeah, I loaned yeah, it. I, I was going to say, I, ha- I remember I have that now because of you. <laughs> like, that is weird. Not that whip! Bill Lugosi's dead, but it's, in oh, J- done, in J- yeah, it's done, done in Japanese. But it's done in Japanese. Wow! Yeah. It's it's a it's a thing. It's different. Crap that way. Well, I used to go to Club X for all those type <laughs> oh, of shows yeah, back yeah, in the that day. Was fun. That was fun. You know, those were those good old those gothic were the fun uh, days. Oh, I was a big gothic. Sister, I was a big Sisters of Mercy fan. Me too. Me, and they tried to take me to uh, Toronto with them when they came to town. My brothers prevented me. He's like, they want to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> What they want to do. Okay, John, whatever. <laughs> I love you, John. <laughs> You're my brother. I love you dearly, but they weren't trying to kill me. <laughs> you sure? <laughs> no, they were Maybe just they were, they were just going to probably make her make her a hand. And I was going to say, too, so like, hey, you, you think I was, because yeah. I remember you did that Tina Turner song the last show. Oh, uh, Not Bush City Limits. Yeah, that Frank DeBlaze asked us to do that song, dared us to do that song, so we kept that in our repertoire forever. So there you go. Is there any Thanks, vocal? Frank. Is there some vocalist you think would be a really challenge to do a song from? Because you have quite the range. I think uh, you, weren't you born singing pretty much, I think? Um, Nina Hagen. I'd like to do some Nina Hagen is what I'd like to do. I find her challenging. And um, also, um, oh, there's silence in the room. What the fuck, guys? Um <laughs> Well, uh, um, Bjork. 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 Bjork is another one. Oh, well, that would wanna, be interesting. Want to do? I love Bjork. I love Bjork. Oh, yeah, it's Nina interesting Hagen stuff. Yeah. Because they are so experimental and different. I don't. I don't <laughs> like run-of-the-mill, boring music like an honest. No, I just remember that. <laughs> I just, I just remember We're not that. boring. I remember, boring I remember that clip from that that cartoon show that I'm not going to mention, but. <laughs> It was a game show. It's like, is this Bjork or Bobcat? It's like, <laughs> oh, it's it like uh, that would be Bobcat. No, that is Icelandic sensation Bjork. You have lost. <laughs> I'm also a big Francois Hardy fan, too. I like her a lot. She's Is she from Quebec? Not France. Oh, okay. She was like one of Serge Gainsbourg's. Okay. Protégés. Did she do? Didn't she do a really good cover of uh, La Vie en Rose? I think so. Yes. Yeah, I think I, I know who you're talking about. And also Edith Piaf because oh, I, I love Edith yeah, yeah, Rose. In, yes, I sing in French. Also, I speak French and I sing in French. Hey, she spoke French. <laughs> La Vie en Rose. Bonjour. Bonjour. That'd be That's a thing. Would you? Would you like to do a few songs in a different language sometime? Like I want to do be... a whole show in different languages. But, but Absolutely. then, Absolutely. Japanese, but actually, Vietnamese, now this, now this raises Russian, a question. Wow. On that, Italian, German. Would you, 
Would so, you do, yes. Would you do one of your songs translated into their language or cover some of their songs? Because don't forget, Both. a lot of times, if you translate right. from yeah. their, from like Italian to English, it makes no sense because yeah. our grammatical Absolutely. structure is Absolutely. different. Right. Well, I've written songs in French for Anonymous Willpower. And I've sung song, song, I've sung, sung, mais si tu, tu dois partir, which is If You Gotta Go Go Now, which is a Bob Dylan song by Fairport Convention. That's the first French song I ever wrote besides Alouette. We've always heard that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wasn't there a song? Johnny Alouette, Alouette, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, exactly. And, I, don't, uh, I don't know French. I know like five words. Uh, That's about all I got. Je comprends la langue. Yeah, uh, yeah, no clue. <laughs> I used to, but you don't use it. You know, if you don't use it, you lose it. Oh, it's a thing. You snooze, you, you snooze, lose. You lose. <laughs> Go back to it. Sponsored by the New York State Guys, Department of Transportation. One thing I said, if you ever... Because I actually Department one of, our... of Department of Department of uh, Transportation. Transport, exactly. Also, I do like the purple match of the hat and the nail polish. And oh, it. thank you. Oh, see, I, I was going more for the cheetah print galoshes. You know what? <laughs> it all ties in together. Look, I am a cheetah whore. Once a cheetah whore, always, always. a cheetah whore. You never whore. saw them. They're great. great no, I never, oh, never. Yes. I mean, because that's the thing. You guys are talking about all this stuff. Either I was too young or not in this area at the time. Oh, I remember the Cheetah Horror shows were just... Because lest we not forget... Just I've only, going to the wrong clubs, that's all. <laughs> I've only been here since 2000. Oh. There was a whole... Well, that's right, you missed a lot. There was yeah. a whole period of the 80s and 90s when I was not in this state. Yes, of hotness. Yeah, there were, a, there were a lot of those kind of more... There were some more underground type clubs in the 90s a lot. We had that Heaven place that was pretty cool. Yeah. I used to work there, too. Out of all the people, I saw Billy Squire there. I thought Billy Jake Squire? Good Lord. <laughs> I saw a cheap trick. The Bucks opened. Yeah, at the auditorium. I saw a cheap trick. I have a Bucks album. Yeah, it's a good album. I saw Actually. cheap trick. Def Leppard and Poison. It was the last show I was at. The last live show I was at. What was wow. Poison like? Cool. Were They're they good? Because cool? it was outside of Pittsburgh, and Brett Michaels is from that area, okay. so he was gung ho. Yeah. I like. I think it's, I think <clears> no, they were they were good. I think it was a good Brett show. Brett Michaels is beautiful. Yeah, it's funny when such I such a beautiful like, man. Back in the he loves early '80s or middle '80s when I was in maybe living I like him even LA. more because he's a small town guy. I like that. I was I was walking around and you know it, when I was living out there and there was poster posters on the telephone poles for Poison like when they were first starting out and it was like they were just a bar band you know just getting going and then who knows you never know. So, That's right. Everybody starts start the same. Everybody right. starts, everybody starts, out starts like that. off in somebody's yeah. garage somewhere. Yeah. But, like, that's a question, too. Like, when you started out, were you good or not yet? Did you have to learn to be good, or did it come naturally? Oh, God, no. Because nobody no, was. That's the thing. No, Pick I, your most popular band. Your well, best I'd thing. say there was First probably... time they ever did I this. I could probably only name one musician that was good from the start, and that would be Mozart. Right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but he was a special kind of being. Alien! I think that uh, Sarah Goodberle is has been good her entire life. You know who that is, right? Yeah. We love you, Sarah. We love you. Congratulations. Speaking of that, something came to mind. One of your terms of the Hall of Fame this year, Nancy Kelly. Nancy Kelly! You have to say I that. know! I'm so proud of her. Yeah, I'm so excited for her. Tell, tell us about her a little Nancy bit. Nancy Kelly been... is, um, was my vocal coach for a while um, after I lost my voice and I lost my tonsils and my... Um, Larynx was completely ruined from the um, acid reflux I had from Ooh. from the gastro, uh, whatever they call it. It's a long pharyn uh, laryngeal pharyngeal reflux gas. I don't know the name of it. I had an operation to elongate my um, esophagus and had my tonsils taken out uh, last year and the year before. So within. 2018 to 2019, it sucked. Um, 2017 to 2019, actually. And I went to this one lovely lady. Um, her name is, oh, of course, now it's not coming to me. It, it'll come to me, but she was over at um, um, Strong, where my doctor, my, my ENT doctor, you know, took up my tonsils, and he says, you have to learn how to talk again. Need to be able to sing the way you sang before you have to relearn everything. So I went to Nancy Kelly and she taught me how to talk sing and she was not easy. I'm thinking 
I'm a singer. I can go in here and just sing and everything's going to be great. And she's like, I don't think so, bitch. <laughs> she's like, well, the good teacher you're going to learn mm -hmm. how to do things my way <clears throat> or it's the highway. And I did. I, I studied under her and I'm grateful that I studied under her because she taught me so much in the short amount of time because I was broke as fuck and just had the, you know, in in the, the car crash. So I do plan on going back to her again because she is probably one of the best vocal coaches I've ever had. You can always learn. That's the thing. It's like Neil Peart, Absolutely. the drummer, who might have been fairly good, <laughs> I guess. What he did... <laughs> I he heard just, that guy had a couple He decided... Along the way, to just try a whole new style. Mm -hmm. Just start from scratch, mm -hmm. just to challenge himself. Mm -hmm. But there's the one story about tonsils I can never verify, but it's my classic one. When I had my tonsils and adenoids out, mm -hmm. my dad would always say, Anson Williams, Potsy, from yep. Happy Days, came around the hospitals and saw uh, me. E oh, really? Yes, and I don't remember. I was whacked out, you know, on the... And my dad says, Potsy came, said, hi, Rob. and That's like... The high moment of my life, Potsy wow. visited me, mm. and I, I'd love to like just maybe get a hold of him and say, "Did you ever yeah, like visit children's I, hospitals?" I, I, in I'm sure that somewhere, like his manager, probably has some record of all the appearances he did. For I mean, they would know if he did it. If he didn't do it yeah. at all, he'd know. That guy yeah. was cool because he would he would he he is a vocal coach, and he would put how to sing on Happy Days. I remember how the the, the mouth positionings and everything. I was like a kid back Potsy then. Potsy was. Oh, yeah. Really? He's, I didn't he's know a that. singer. He's, well, even on Happy Days, he was teaching people. Yeah, they, they had their band. They yeah, had their band. band. Yeah. And, um, and uh, he's. Uh, anyway, Nancy is. If you need a good vocal coach, go to Nancy Kelly. She is amazing. She is very strict. And she is very fun to be with. And she will teach you how to sing. It might te take a while for you to get the way she wants you to sound, but she's fine-tuning you. And because of Nancy, my vocals are ten times better than they were before. And where I can get the raspiness back that I had before I lost my tonsils. But I can also sing. My analyst told me. And I was right out of my head. And you blow through three-hour shows, and you just wail and Easily. wail. It's gonna, we had this conversation the other night a few weeks ago about, you think anybody, even this guy over here, Greg, can sing? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, I had vocal lessons at Nazareth. Come on now. And they get your drummer then. He's like, get by the drums and get rid of the microphone. But you know what? No, but t to her point, when I did do the vocal lessons, I remember I learned like a lot of the correct stuff. And mm -hmm. the reason they wanted me to take vocal lessons, well, I don't know why they... But they said, well, maybe my voice was light or something. I don't know. But they said, if you're going to go into teaching, you're going to need your voice a lot. Mm -hmm. And you're going to have to work your voice and toughen it up or mm -hmm. whatever. Mm -hmm. So that's why I took voice lessons. Hmm. And I remember she had me do an Old Man River, which goes from like way down here to way up high. And it was like, you know, you go... You run the gamut of the whole... Of Somewhere the whole, there's a, de there's the a cassette range. tape covered with dust Probably. of Greg singing Old Man River. I've always used an example of Nick Cave when I saw oh, him. I love him and I'm going to go see him again this year. But he always... He was one of the best performances I've ever seen at the Electric Factory in Philadelphia. And he knows what songs to sing. He knows the range. And he's just he has this presence... And I suppose you know that, okay, maybe I can't sing this or this. But would you ever want to try opera? I did try opera when I was younger. I just wasn't into it. It's That's tough. why I wanted to do mm. Nina Hagen, because she was an opera singer before. She, and so was Freddie Mercury. Yeah. Before. Um, yeah, you talk about a voice. Yeah. Did you ever see that in the movie, it might be not true or true, but when he's with Queen and mm -hmm. they're like, look at your buck teeth. And he goes, oh, can anybody do this? And he just wails. Yeah, yeah. And I totally agree with him. Don't get your teeth fixed because it will change the yeah, way why? sound. But you should know this too. You know, almost studied opera, James Dewan, Scotty. Oh, really? Star Trek. I didn't he know said that, that was a, a missed opportunity for him. He had an opportunity to study opera. And think of yeah. his voice, all the characters he did, mm -hmm. everything right. else. And don't forget, he was missing the middle finger on one of his yeah, hands. Yeah, you know that, right? No. It's called know giving that. Hitler the finger. If you no, because it, look... it was shot off by his own, when he was in the war. He was in the Canadian, what, Air Force? He was in oh, wow. Air Force. one of the branches in Canada. And he was oh, coming back, yeah. and, the, and the sentry mistook him 
for an enemy and shot him like five times. And he had his hands up or something. Yeah, like it, it caught. A, he blew off his middle finger, shot him in the <laughs> chest twice. But I think his cigarette lighter stopped the bullet from going wow. into his heart. And if you read his biography <laughs> written by Peter David, the chapter on it's called "Giving Hitler the Finger." Yeah, <laughs> because it was during World War II, awesome. and he got. He got his middle finger, part wow. of his middle finger, shot well, off we by have his you, own Greg, countrymen. We, cannot, we would be remiss, and I want to use the word remiss to show I am awake. <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> uh, what serials have you been watching lately? Oh, uh, well. <laughs> Captain <laughs> Crunch. You know, a little bit of a... Did you pick anything new up, or has it been... Well, I watched a lot of the same old stuff. I, I, I revisited King of the Rocket Men. A uh, yes. Ago, oh, which my. I really like. That's a song title. Sadly, I'm watching... Grey's Anatomy right now. <laughs> like a Grey's okay, I'll, Anatomy. Okay, I'll trump everybody here. Sorry for the word for anybody else there. It's not political. <laughs> yeah, Fine, everybody. everybody. But, Come on, uh, be more no, inclusive right? with everybody. But I'm watching The Affair, which has to be the most depressing show you could ever find. Yet, like a moth to flame, I'm attracted to it. I just can't stop I know. watching. know! And it's so, all the characters are just... Nobody's if you think, happy. If, if you think <laughs> you're messed up... And Castle Rock. <laughs> How did you like that? I really, I honestly admit, I could not get into the first season. Uh, the first season was kind of really slow. The second season was cool because it was the role reversal okay. of everybody. Did you watch Nosferatu? No. I like that. See, that I was like a good you show. The, old, the, the, the old show. This no, is the, actually this is a new it's one. It's a new it's show. It's like, okay, off a novel. It's N O S eight four a two. Yeah, okay. because that's the car's license plate. Oh. It's like almost like the, it's like a sort of a vampire who feeds off kids. He takes them away to a holiday to land, Christmas and, land. Yes, no, it's it, not holiday land. It's he's not politically correct. Christmas. I'm land. saying holiday. I'm thinking a thief yeah. of always. From yeah, Clyde and then Martin. he drains their energy because they're constantly happy, and he basically turns them into little demons. Yeah, I, I started Imps. watching this movie the other yeah, night. Yes, I couldn't get through it. It's <laughs> called The Black Dahlia, but it's a, I've it's seen like it. This German oh. version. Oh, oh no, the German the German Black Dahlia. This is this is one. the U- Uli somebody or others Black Dahlia, and it's like it starts out. It's basically a crime drama. But it starts out with these, with all these like would-be actresses yeah, go into this right. building for a <laughs> casting call, and they get dismembered. Oh, so they're getting tied, you know, tied and they're screaming, and I mean, and it's like you don't really understand what's going on. And then there's there's a young detective, and he's on the case. But we started watching it, and we were like, okay, dumb. we're not is watching this. Is this a Japanese version? No, it's this German. is some Ju- German. It's a it's a regular movie in English, but it's just some weird. And Off the cuff. The thing about Nosferatu, it <laughs> has, one on my, that has one of my favorite Betty actors. Something. Good old Zachary Quinto. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's one of, great. One of Pittsburgh's other favorite sons. Yeah, he's good, man. He he was in, what was the other thing he was in besides Star Trek? Oh, he had a really good role in uh, American Horror Story. He was in yeah, the first American Horror Story, season or two yeah. of American Horror Story. You ever watched that? That would be oh, like up yeah, your alley. That great. was good. You oh, would yeah. love, I, Covered in Freak Show were my favorite yeah, ones. Freak Show good. is my favorite. Which and I went through about the, the character. He was real. He was some crazy stuff. I love yeah, that show. the Lobster Boy. That one, oh, no, yeah. actually, the one Edwin oh. Mordrake. He was real. Yeah, no, Lobster. Everybody, yeah, Lobster Boy because his father like murdered his mother. Yeah, the original Lobster Man shot shot his wife. Wow, and the kid was around Lobster Boy. <laughs> And they lived in this freak community in Florida, which is any city in Florida. Right. But the thing <laughs> is, if you watch, Florida. if you watch, that Florida. if you watch Humbug, that actually is a real community from X Files. That that show, right. when the, the uh, one where they go, that is a real community. Yeah, is that wow. the one where they're hoobly diggly doddling and not swearing and making up words, and it was kind of like a, a fun the gooby gooby gobble the hoodly goddling that was well, free. that was free. Yeah, it was the old gooby gobble we accept her. Yeah. that movie. F- Oh, I was just going to say it freaked me out. Ah, but puns when you days. think about it, something, because it, it reminds you of like some old campfire story you tell. Yeah. And you want to know what, what movie really freaked me out? Uh oh, I'm afraid to even know. Audition. Ah, uh, audition. <laughs> One of my favorite Japanese directors of all time. Was I've not it seen Maike, it. right? What was it about? <gasps> that's the, not to hold I'm yeah. not going to give you any it's spoilers. Hard. You don't have no, to spoil It's hard anything. to describe Maike's movies because they don't make a whole hell of a lot of I'll sense. You just you have to sit about. there and watch. That's fine. It's about a girl who goes to an audition. <clears throat> that's it? Yeah. That's, yeah. That, and chaos ensues. <laughs> and, yeah. And it's very... Graphic. Revenge worthy. If you're angry at the world, you must see audition. 
Or well, I see. I used to see. We used to get these Toronto channels somehow on the TV years mm -hmm, ago, mm -hmm. and there used to be these Japanese horror movies. These were. I can't even describe Man, it. I mean, I've seen mm -hmm. the one with the the death wig, where the wig would go around and kill people. <laughs> but, uh, but these movies were just unbelievable in well, terms you of. You know fantastic. that during World War II, the the Japanese army would literally macerate everybody in China. Like oh, the yeah. children, oh, the yeah. women, the men, the everybody. Didn't care. Everybody forgets that Japan was horrifyingly were brutal, brutal, to, brutal to China for a long time. Brutal. They they make uh, Rudolf Hit uh, Rudolf Adolf Hitler look like a saint. <laughs> Rudolf Hitler. <laughs> yes, that was his cousin. That's, that's hey, his Rudy. red nose. Hi. That's his red nose. This is alcoholic. But there's like the cousin. scene in like yeah, there's, a, there's a scene in a Bruce Lee movie where there's no dogs in China and he kicks the sign mm -hmm. because of the oppression by the Japanese right. all those years. Wow. But Takashi Maike is one of those guys where. Settle in because a lot of his movies are really long and they are graphic. Well, I had yeah, I had the one Gozu where a woman gives birth to her husband as a full grown adult. Oh my lord! My lord! <laughs> and there's a cow demon who's just a dude with a cow head walking around in tidy whities. <laughs> it's the same movie. That's on the DVD cover. <laughs> well, you know, which I own. You can have ideas, but that doesn't always yeah, mean they're good. For those of you out there who have never dropped acid, just watch this movie. <laughs> Gozu, G O Z U. Yeah, sounds like somebody who's watching a lot of Fellini films. <laughs> right. It makes you wonder if you I like Fellini. Yeah, I do too. I do too. Holy crap! Uncle Boone me who. No. Oh, that was. That was a good one. It's Uncle Boon Me, who can now somehow recall his past lives, is the full title of the movie. I think it's a Thai movie. And somebody, I think, turns into Bigfoot. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I found it, and I was like, Rob, you got to see this I was gonna movie! say, because you're all over the place with film. Have you, have you went to any of my old martial arts movies? No. You're not one of those. those <laughs> no, I, I like old, old martial arts. Movies. I don't. For, I mean, it's fun to watch I them, I guess, dudes. but they don't have much. Who tap? Like Jackie much Chan is Drunken Master. Well, oh, you know what? Great. Watch any of these CW shows, and it's like a martial arts movie. My brother no and I used to watch Green martial Arrow arts and all films stuff. all the time as we were kids. Well, they did we we wrapped kids. up now. Like Green Arrow is yeah. done. But I mean, there's so many fights in those shows. I wonder if they're going to have a Green Lantern show, though, coming up because they sort of hinted at it. That would be cool. I think they might because. They hinted at it, I think. It would be great. In the end, which would be cool. What was I, that? The one with the 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 midget. Nine deaths of the ninja. Nine deaths of the ninja with the midget assassins. <laughs> oh my gosh, that reminds me of uh, Samurai. Uh -oh. So the Seven Samurais is that? What seven seven minutes, Samurai. Seven, 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 the seven, old uh, Kurosawa movie. Yes. There's yeah. also Lone Wolf and Cub, the one with the guy with the baby carriage and oh the, the masters God, of yes. death and everything. Yes. <laughs> oh, there's this one film that I have that Don bought me, and I can't remember. I'm the afraid. Name of it. <laughs> it's hysterical. Um, something about chicken, drunken chicken, or something like that. Well, there's poultry geist about uh, the uh, killer. <laughs> Yeah. Drunken chicken master, <laughs> drunken chicken, drunken shrimp. I don't know. I don't know. In terms of, in terms of killer animals, I think thanks killing the centuries old turkey demon might beat everybody. Yeah, right. thanks killing is up there. Slugs, drunken master. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jackie drunken. Chan is drunken yeah. master. But you know what he said? He took it all from like Charlie Chaplin and all the classic. But this isn't. But this isn't the one I'm talking about. Oh. It's it's it's. I can't think of the name of it. The next time. I'm here. I'll Stay tuned for the result of that. Well, it's, I finally saw Killer Clowns. Oh, oh finally. Oh, God. You know, they say, they claim they had a $2 million budget for that movie. Well, this was had a commentary with the creators on it, and they said, they, we've been kicking this idea around for years, and it's like they finally got it done. And, it's and like, half of the budget went to the clown makeup. I'll tell you, though, that was a creepy movie. It was. If you took the campiness out of it, the, the fact they had no dialogue made it even scarier. They just... Yeah were there, and they were just... If you just accepted the... I mean, I thought the premise was great. With the, I, yeah. The they're tent, making cotton the candy out of people. You know, yeah. Yeah, where I mean, it was ships, great. And, but then the little one, the little bones. clown crying, and then not... Yeah. Uh, gonna, what are you going to do, knock my block off? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Oh man, I love that. I movie. mean, I always thought that movie was like you know seemed like it was always a big joke, but then when I really watched it, I saw there was actually some. Yeah, you look at it, it's here, like, well, oh, that's know? actually not as crappy. Somebody as people actually, made me somebody think there was one movie. Restored, was there was good. one movie on films where that had people picking their favorite movie, and somebody said there's no flaws in this movie at all. 
I'll tell you, two of my favorite movies, and I know poor Debbie, my girlfriend, is to hear this all the time. Love you, Debbie. Two of my, love you too, honey. Ooh, ooh, you're not getting in the house. <laughs> two of my favorite weird dark comedies are Death to Smoochie and, <laughs> oh, Death to and, Smoochie. and Monkey Bone. Have you ever seen Monkey Bone? Bridget oh Fonda, my God. Br- Brendan Fraser. Yeah. And that weird world, that weird it's an animation Goldberg thing. Judge. He's, a, he's an animator and he gets knocked out. He has a car accident and he's unconscious and he has this, his character. He has this, He's dreaming about his monkey character that he had created. But Death to Smoochie is so dark. It's... Robin Williams, he's cheating. He's cheating. He's a TV host or something and he's, he has parents come on. He has a kid's show and he extorts the parents. For money to get the kids on the show, and then I don't know, Edward Norton. I was gonna plays, say Edward Norton is smoochy. Yeah, and he plays this like a dinosaur type thing or hip. I don't know some kind of like a Barney know where hip off, like a Barney. Yeah. yeah, and and he goes to methadone clinics and he's singing the guys in methadone clinics. I mean, it's freaking hysterical. Have you seen the Banana Splits movie? <laughs> no. where they do an update, but now they're oh. all homicidal. That no. was. <laughs> I mean, I've seen some weird shit in my lifetime, and I was struggling to get through that one. <laughs> You know, that's a weird one. You know, Kung Fu Hustle. <laughs> I like oh. I like Kung Fu Hustle. That's that's a movie. I'm a fan. Oh, okay. I own that. Love that movie. It's my favorite. That's a good one. Oh my gosh! I have to check that out. Would you ever think of doing maybe a like a story album where you do like a film on music, like come up with the plot and just do it like a rock opera? Oh, absolutely. I've been thinking about what that character one would for you play? Not Uncle Sam, Ernie. I hope Sam, Uncle Ernie. Sam was working on that. Forever. That's right. Yeah, I think that. I still might have a copy of that somewhere because cool. he gave us yeah. like a little script. He did have an idea about an elevator. You were in an elevator yeah. and you stopped at all these floors, and each floor had some kind of weird goings on. Mm. Going yeah. on. That's what you have and, the you have the idea. When I like the, the really good bands have that idea. It's not why. It's why not. It's always right. something different. Always something <laughs> challenging. It's something new. And it's amazing. It would have been a good but idea. Not blue. Something borrowed. <laughs> Would you do like a blues, like something like a genre thing? I mean, the thing is, I always say, you take everybody, it's like you talk about New Orleans, you have that whole stew of your music, every different, well, you could pick out so many different things. Well, you know, I wanted to do like an anthology type of thing. I mean, it's been done before, so I don't know if it would work. But I was thinking about taking an object, mm-hmm. like I was thinking record player, mm-hmm. or, you know, you and you have the record player... And somebody buys the record player and puts their music on it. Well, then they don't want it. Then it gets sold to a store. And then somebody goes and buys the record player from the store. And then their their thing gets told with their music. And when you're traveling through these different hmm. scenarios with something or other. It's like, almost the like the brave movie, little bucks. record player. <laughs> like, you, know, dollar, you know, where did this dollar bill come from? Right. It came like right. from here and everything. And you I don't know what adventure. Like the brave little toaster. Brave little toaster. <laughs> Together. Just watch that. Long ago. I love that movie. It's so cute. Brave little toaster. The oh, Brave Little no. Record Player. You've never seen it? No. Oh, Brave a, Little Toaster's a, great. It's so cute. It's about a toaster and a all these appliance appliances. people, They're, appliance these friends. People are moving and they forget the box, oh. and the toaster <laughs> leads the refrigerator and the stove and a whole bunch of other. Like, Fairly like, certain wow. that uh, Thor <laughs> Ravenscroft played the vacuum cleaner. Nice. Rob, should, Rob, you know that. Yeah, the Grinch and Tony the Tiger. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he was really the, uh, good movie. Interesting. Yeah. So we could do the brave little record, record player. player. Would you ever want to do <laughs> yeah. something like uh, Ben and Katie with their music school? They did the point. Yes, you saw it. I want, Would you guys I ever want to do that where you mix yes. yeah, music cool. and theater? Absolutely. Yeah, one character tried to play the bad person. He just couldn't pull it no, off. I gotta say that. They tried. But, but was, that was that really was cool. Really cute show. That was really neat. It was. And would you ever really want to try that? I yep. mean, you're, I think you're Absolutely. a natural ham, Greg. Yeah, don't you? <laughs> Don, I don't know about. Oh, Don, Don oh, can uh, act. He can really act. He's, a, we, we do like little scenarios together and yeah, there's this one thing where he's on. He's not talking during this interview though, Don. Oh, no, come on, Don. Uh, hold on, hold on. I'll, I'll get him to talk. Hold on a second. I'll, I'll, I'll get him to say something. Uh oh. This <laughs> might be um, from the beyond. Hold on. A second. From the beyond. He's still alive, Greg. <laughs> you gonna say we did? Yeah. How is like mixing? How long does that take? A lot of times, could it just be like if you can't like the you man? Can't, say you can't has find been the up sound. Is it for the, pain? the past seven days nonstop? Maybe getting two or three little winks of sleep in. He is at that computer 24 hours a yeah, day. Yeah, it takes a long time. It takes a good 
two, three hours to mix it. I mean, once you get all the parts, you lay down all these tracks, then you got to pick the best of this one and best of this one and best of, and try to put stuff together yeah. and things yeah, like I that. I never did that. That's cool. That so, yeah, yeah, it so takes a lot of time. And yeah, then you and get I, ear fatigue because you, you're listening to stuff so much, your ears become like I've been, I've been mixing a tune for the past two years. Who is this there guy? Wait a minute. Uh, Wait a minute. The guess. Phantom uh, producer. The Phantom. The Phantom of the yeah, Sound. Sometimes you keep listening and you just keep hearing things you want to fix. And right. You just keep, like, it's like actually a never-ending process. You have to decide. Hey, Tell me about the seatbelt on the couch. No. You're a fucking loser. <laughs> You're a fucking loser. What the hell? Is this a kale moment? <laughs> <laughs> the phantom of the studio has popped in. <laughs> this you a know kale that moment? most injuries that occur during the Super Bowl hashtag, don't recur on, on, occur on the field, moment. right in your very living room. People overreacting to the game, pulling straining muscles. That's why we invented the couch seatbelt. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> There, Don, Don did his. There he's back to work. He recommends the couch seatbelt on Angie's. So list. now coming up, you have. We're going to play this yeah. song, but you have a lot of shows coming up. Yeah, give us some dates do? and whatnot. Yeah, you oh, do, yeah, don't do. you? I, I know so. I have them on my little yeah. calendar. We have Johnny's coming yep, up. We have Johnny's time. coming up. We have uh, Dinosaur Trio because you're playing with someone else right. on uh, 18th. We're going to Florida for. Uh, we gonna have to take care of my. You're mom. gonna replace though. You're gonna get replaced by that little drum thing. You like hitting that too much. <laughs> I have so much fun on my like, cajon. I think that Johnny's is the 21st. I'll I'm, tell you, I just say, a, just a I tick. Have I have my phone. I have my calendar, but I don't have it with me. I write them on the calendar, and I'm like, who's playing? I can't <laughs> read it. <laughs> Let me get my calendar. Uh, who's this? I, I wanted to thank you, Rob, for the Christmas card that you oh. gave me. Like asparagus watermelon? Really what, nice. Who's playing this? <laughs> Those are cool. Those are like retro cards yeah. I found. So the 18th, we are playing at um, Dinosaur, the trio. So that's Eric, um, Don, and myself. This is and March then, th that we're yeah. talking about. Smarch, yeah. Smarch. Lousy Smarch March weather. 21st, we're playing at Johnny's. And on Culver Road. On Culver Road. In the back room. So when this mm -hmm. comes out, this will actually be. And I'll tell you, you see park. Go yes. to these things. Yes, there's lots of parking. So you know my issues with. <laughs> right. Ample I had one. Ample. I went to a dinosaur show and they had the hockey game. Oh yeah, the freaking parking there is insane. It's and then ridiculous. we will be playing at uh, Lux Lounge on the 24th, uh, which is a Friday, April 24th. We have we're working on doing another show at Roar. With, um, that was lots of fun. What an that, awesome place. That's a great place. They if took the old sticky lips on Culver Road and made a nice place. If you are a musician or performer, I would not have found it if I didn't have really, Susie. Really great yeah. people. Because I would not have found it if I didn't text you. Because yeah. I was sort of confused. But when you told me, I found it. It's yeah. really, I love the lion there. The little oh, multicolored lion and everything. I love Dee Dee Dubois. She's great. Oh, yes. She's, she's just a beautiful person. But and then when is this coming out for everybody's listening yeah. pleasure? I do believe that this is going to be March twenty first, hopefully. By the if time you get we the get title, back. it's if like if it's no. not by March twenty first, it'll be at Lux on um, April twenty fourth. So soon. The title will be forthcoming. Something we don't know yet. Whatever we want. You know, one day it'll right. come. It's like all these songwriters you get inspiration from personal, but I think you get it just from living. You might be walking out and see something. How about Nar? Narcissist, narcissist lollipop. <laughs> How about pigeon pooped on my car? <laughs> How about bird pooped on my face? And on that note, good night. <laughs> but you kept introduce. I love this song. I have to admit that you played this song already. I love. I mean, I love. All, Which but one? Angel in Control. Yes, describe. I will tell you all about Angel in Control. Okay. Tell us so. a story, Susie. Oh, let me get around the corner, kids. Come on. Come on. Let's all get up here and all you fuckers. Let let me tell you the story. <laughs> when I was a little girl, my dad and my mom got a divorce. And my life went to shit. So this is about all those people and Harvey Weinstein. <laughs> no, seriously. This song is about uh, things that, that I remember, like these really weird visions that I remember as a child. I grew up, my dad was a farmhand for a year. And this is after he retired from the military for 26 years. God, may he rest in peace. Um, and uh, there was a crow in front of our tree, 
and I tied a rope around it and I tried to make it fly again. It was dead. And it literally came back to life and flew. And my mom was like, what are you doing? Wash your hands. And in my head, I thought that I brought this thing back to life. So I became this magical being and I've been a magical being ever since. And I've been bringing chipmunks back to life. And it's a true story. Ask Liza. Rose. And I will have to say about Harvey Weinstein's done for Hollywood producers, what John Wayne Gacy's done for clowns, pretty mm-hmm. much. What about <laughs> this? Is uh, so let's check this album out. The song's great. See them live, you will not regret it at all. And give them, if you see them before this comes out, give them an album title. Yeah, we'd <laughs> love right. to hear your please. Any input from anybody. Yeah. Find them on Facebook and send them ideas. Yeah, you're on Facebook. You're all over the place. We read your mail that consists of posted words on a piece of paper. Our fans (laughs) are our friends. So if you are our if you are our friend, say that ten times fast. You're our fan. fan, You're our friend. We really love everybody and appreciate the support. And we love giving support back to other other people. No, I thought of it. You snooze, you lose. You snooze, you lose. That's the album title. Nasco Power. Check them out. They're all social media. But here's Angel of Control. Thanks, all of you. We'll see you again. See ya. Bye. Awooga! Set it free.